Hello everybody, let's have an idea about tracer methodology, its development types and the main principles with some declarative examples. For more videos, visit my Facebook page, Healthcare Quality. Tracer methodology is a key part of the Joint Commission on Site Survey process. It uses information for an organization to follow the experience of care, treatment, or services for a number of patients through the organization's entire healthcare delivery process. Tracers allow surveyors to identify performance issues in one or more steps of the process or interfaces between processes. So what is a tracer? It's an evaluation method and an effective way to assess a healthcare organization's performance of care, treatment, and services provided as viewed or experienced by frontline staff and the patient. During tracer methodology, we follow the treatment path an individual patient has taken in the healthcare delivery system and involves following a process from beginning to an end point, identifying performance gaps, and identifying opportunities for improvement. Tracers assess how care processes and the care environment impact quality and patient safety. You can learn more in eight hours of tracing than in 20 hours of chart review. Tracer methodology started in 2004 and used by GCI to focus on operational system critical to safety and quality of individual care. Shift from survey preparation to continuous quality improvement customized to each organization. The goal is to look at the organization as a whole, not as independent parts. Orient your staff on the new process. Consider having frontline staff and senior leaders to conduct mock survey focusing on one priority area each month. Assess potential risks. Using the information provided to identify problems, set priorities, implement a quality improvement project to improve the process structure and outcomes. Evaluate your quality improvement project through other tracers to check the success of any change made to a system or process and repeat the cycle. We have three types of tracers, individual patient tracers, system tracer activity, and accreditation program specific tracers. The general steps to perform tracers are one, get organized, two, educate staff, three, perform tracers, four, document findings, five, analyze findings, six, develop corrective actions, and seven, implement and sustain improvements. These are the skills needed to trace. For effective use of tracers, determine the goals, train the tracer team, create tools to standardize findings, 
establish a schedule, assign the tracer activities, preview the findings, review the findings, aggregate the data, prioritize the issues, share the results, and develop and implement the improvement plan. Individual tracers are designed to trace the care experiences that a patient had while at an organization. It's a way to analyze the organization system of providing care, treatment, or services using actual patients as the framework for assessing standards compliance. Patients selected for these tracers will likely to be those in high risk areas or whose diagnosis, age, or type of services received may enable the best in depth evaluation of the organization's processes and practices. Steps for individual tracers are identify the patient, locate the patient, review the patient record, interview the staff, visit other areas the patient received care, observe care in these areas, interview the staff in these areas. For system tracer activity, include an interactive session with a surveyor and relevant staff members in tracing one specific system or process within the organization based on information from individual tracers. While individual tracers follow a patient through his or her course of care, the system tracer evaluates the system or process, including the integration of related processes and the coordination and communication among disciplines and departments in those processes. The three topics evaluated by system tracers are data management, infection control, and medication management. System tracer steps. Identify the issue. Identify where the process begins. Identify the process. Interview the staff. Follow the route of the process. Observe the process in these areas and interview the staff in these areas. For accreditation program specific tracers, the goal of these tracers is to identify risk points and safety concerns within different levels and types of care, treatment or services. Program specific tracers focus on important issues relevant to the organization, such as clinical services offered, and high-risk, high-volume patient populations. Examples are a selected high-risk medication, disinfection sterilization, pain management, diagnostic test process, and a single patient safety goal. An example of an individual patient tracer. First, tracer team reviews medical record. A 72-year-old man presented to ER with chest pain. An electrocardiogram showed signs of sinus tachycardia. Staff administered aspirin and drew blood. The patient treated for diabetes and hypertension. Recently, quit smoking 
after 33 years sent to cardiac catheterization lab for an angiogram which revealed five blockages put on IV heparin nitroglycerin and beta blockers transferred to ICU hypertension was an issue so medications were adjusted to lower his blood pressure surgery for a coronary artery bypass graft was scheduled for the next morning antibiotics were begun at the time of surgery sent to ICU with ventilator which was removed five hours later developed pneumonia within two days IV antibiotic was changed but history of smoking has weakened his lungs placed on ventilator wean from ventilator within six days received pulmonary treatment regimen of neuplizer treatments incentive spirometry and assisted cuff transferred to a general medical unit with telemetry after three days scheduled to be discharged for continued outpatient rehabilitation after reviewing the medical records tracer staff visited emergency department they spoke with emergency department staff discussions cover communication assessment performance improvement and medication management issues they asked them the following questions first a little over two weeks ago patient came into the emergency department with chest pain and a history of hypertension and diabetes what processes were followed for triaging and treating him second question i see that a cardiac catheterization was necessary how was informed consent obtained from patient third question you have said that like many heart attack victims the patient delayed seeking help after experiencing the first symptoms has your department conducted any performance improvement projects to decrease the time to begin treatment so in the emergency department tracer surveyors discussed the following points triage process patient assessment communication prior to patient transfer medication process including for high risk concentrated medications and IV solutions communication needs for elderly patients competency of medical and nursing staff in emergency care then surveyor team visited cardiac cath lab and they talked with the staff nurse and the cardiologist they talked about verbal orders assessment and emergency care issues they used the following questions first what communication took place between the catheterization lab and the emergency department before patient arrived for his procedure second how did you make certain patient had no allergies to the contrast medium being used for the procedure and third what process was used for ensuring medical equipment safety so in cath lab they discussed the following points pre-procedural patient assessment patient identification process 
informed consent, patient privacy and confidentiality, infor infor infection control, patient monitoring during and after procedure, use and maintenance of equipment, sedation and anesthesia use and safety, frequency of cancellation of procedures and reasons. Then surveyors visited OR. They talked to the staff, circulating nurse and anesthesiologist. And discussion focused on medication use, anesthesia care, informed consent, site verification, emergency care issues, infection control, and patient safety goals. Questions were as follows. 1. What assessment had been performed and what information did you receive before the, the patient arrived in the operating room? 2. Can you explain the process to obtain informed consent for patient for this surgery? 3. What processes do you follow to verify that you had the correct patient and procedure before you started patient surgery? 4. During open heart surgery, concentrated potassium was used. How is access to this undiluted concentrated electrolyte controlled? 5. Patients undergoing bypass surgery are at increased risk of developing a surgical site infection. What preventive measures did you take to help reduce the risk for patient? 6. How was the placement of patient's pulmonary artery catheter confirmed? 7. How do you maintain this equipment? How were you trained to use it? 8. What do you do in the event of fire? Surveyors also request credentialing files for the anesthesiologist and the cardiac surgeon. Then they moved to the recovery room, where they talked about verbal orders, clinical practice, guidelines, and equipment management. They asked the following questions. 1. Following the patient's surgery, the patient was started on an IV infusion pump for pain management. What checks did you perform on the equipment before starting him on the pump. Number two, who made the decision to discharge this patient from the recovery room? Number three, what guidelines did you follow for post anesthesia monitoring of the patient? At cardiac ICU, tracer staff talks with attending physician ICU nurse, respiratory therapist, and infection control practitioner. Topics include communication, assessment, clinical practice guidelines, credentialing, infection control, equipment management, and medication management. They used the following questions. One, was patient restrained while on ventilator? How was the decision made to remove patient from the ventilator? 2. How did the OR communicate what procedures took place when the patient was transferred to the ICU? Number 3. The patient was receiving IV pain medication following surgery. Can you show me where you documented 
his pain assessment, a treatment, and reassessment. So, in cardiac ICU, the points of discussion are communications received from recovery room, patient assessment and monitoring, patient privacy and confidentiality, infection control, use and maintenance of equipment, especially clinical alarm systems, staff competency based on patient populations cared for in ICU, process for advanced directives and end-of-life issues, medication management and handling of verbal orders. Then we will start our system tracers with medication management example. From where to start? Pharmacy, select a medication a selected patient receiving. We can use the survey V's in Tracer, which are used to verify compliance to standards by review, interview, and view. We can start the review by reviewing the following documents. Quality plan document, credentials and privileges, policy and procedure manual, drug formulary, and lookbooks. Interview could be done during document review session with the, with the head of the pharmacy drug committee members and pharmacy staff and also during the facility tour with medical staff, nursing staff, patients and patient relatives. During their tour, they could view the pharmacy, satellite pharmacies, medication rooms, medication stores, medication preparation and fluid admixture units, inward medication, and crash course in critical care units. The medication management functions are planning, selection, procurement, storage, prescribing and ordering, preparation, dispensing, administration, monitoring, and evaluation. For selecting the drug list, they check a policy in place to identify drug selection and order, processing the list, and approval of the drug list. For procurement, they check who is responsible First in first out policy, managing drug shortage, and how they deal with drugs not in the list. For drug ordering, they check whose authority to prescribe, any privileges, the prescription, its contents, handwriting, and do not use list and abbreviations. Drug administration is usually checked by observation, hand washing, wearing gloves, any specific remarks, inform the patient, and they check for the 10 rights of drug administration. Drug monitoring is checked by interview for medication error rate, policy of reporting, and action to be done in case of error. 
and by review of policy of reporting adverse reactions, incident and adverse reaction forms, data collection forms, data analysis, and decisions made. Medication use system tracer also include the following. Number one, pharmacy premises, adequate space, cleanliness, ventilation, humidity, lightning, security, fire safety, and drug dispensing. Number two, pharmacy equipment, fridges, laminar flow, drug carts, and IT system. Number three, other pharmacy safety issues. Proper drug labeling, proper marking of high-risk medications, proper marking of look-alike or sound-alike medications, proper labeling of, of flammable materials, and the flammables kept away from heat. Drug labeling for individual patients should include patient name, patient medical record number, drug name, strength, frequency, and barcoding. The second system tracer we will talk about is infection control. It includes a group discussion, an individual tracer, and a facility tour. In infection control group discussion, attendees will be the infection control committee members, including physicians, nurses, pharmacists, laboratory technicians, and clinicians, dietary, laundry, and quality improvement staff, staff responsible for the physical plant, and organization leaders and the person responsible for the infection control program. Topics addressed in this discussion are the hand hygiene program, how you identify individuals with infections, how you include these individuals in your surveillance system, current and past surveillance activity, surveillance methods for healthcare associated and non-healthcare associated infections, and type of analysis conducted on infection control data, including comparisons. Internal and external reporting of infection control data, completed or current physical plan changes that affected infection control, actions you have taken as a result of surveillance and the outcomes of those actions, managing sentinel events associated with healthcare associated infections, turnaround time for lab results, and whether staff follow universal precautions. Examples of infection control individual tracers used are a TB patient admitted through emergency to medical unit to radiology to medical unit to rehab. Example two, an immunocompromised patient admitted through emergency to oncology to intensive care unit to medical unit to end of life care unit. In the facility tour, they discuss different aspects of infection control with staff, clinical and support, in each of the areas visited, which may include resident care areas, admission, pharmacy, kitchen, laundry, and dining area. The third system tracer discussed will be data use tracer.
This will be done through an interactive group session. Participants will be representatives from information management, clinical and direct care areas, and leadership. The discussion on how you use data to improve patient safety and care quality. The use of statistical process control. Topics to be discussed are number one, topics related to performance improvement and Oryx performance measure data. Number two, how leaders use data to prioritize decisions about improving quality of care and patient safety. Number three, methods of reporting results to leadership. Number four, dissemination of findings to and involvement of appropriate medical clinical staff. Number five, actions taken to address identified opportunities for improvement. Number six, interpretation and reporting mechanisms. Number seven, data analysis methodology and related training. Number eight, data transmission to external entities if applicable. Number nine, data collection methods, including provisions for data integrity, quality, confidentiality, and security. Number 10, the performance measure, measures currently monitored. Number 11, organizations' ab approach to assessing staffing effectiveness in inpatient care areas and how to use this data or information. For the third type of tracer, which is accreditation program specific tracers, we have the following example. It's a focused medication tracer. We explore the path of a selected high-risk medication based on the group discussion or previous information identified through patient tracer. Our example is about heparin IV. We start with the lab results, then the medical doctor order and the order goes to pharmacy. Pharmacy will make the preparation and deliver it to the unit, then stored in the unit. The nurse checks the order and administers the medication to the patient. Thank you.